I've got a wooden post here and a hammer and I'm going to show that the swing plane in this case is going to be vertical. I'm going to use a hammer to strike the fence post into the floor. Resting the hammer on the fence post, you can see that's a square blow. The ideal plane is straight up and straight down. That's the simplest and most repetitive movement. So when the hammer travels in the line of the post, that's a blow in plane. If I took the hammer over here, that's a glancing blow. A glancing blow has some merit, but it's the vertical blow in this case that keeps the hammer head in plane. Now, the idea of a swing plane, it's a principle, but it's also a law. I can address the post with my hammer and have the choice of 360 degrees around the post, and that is my preference. But the law states, but if the hammer travels down the post in a vertical plane, that is the ideal blow. Let's go and talk now about a blow within a horizontal plane, and then we'll get closer to the golf swing. I've created a wooden peg with a golf ball on the end. So I could use it like I did the fence post and hit the peg there and the golf ball. But in this case, I'm going to do it at chest level and show that the hammer head has to work in the plane as I do this. So there's the peg going into the post and I think you can see, although the plane is now level with the floor, the requirement is the same. In the ideal scenario, we want the hammer head to travel in the line of the green peg at all times. Let's refer now to the golf club itself. I've got a six iron here and I'm going to address the ball on the end of the green peg. Now just as the hammer, I want the club head to travel in the same plane as the green peg. So in my backswing, the club head tracks in that plane in the ideal world and then comes back to the plane. Again, I can make the mistake of going below plane, then I'd catch the ball a glance and blow, or I'd have to reroute. That's pretty ugly in golf. It doesn't matter if the blade goes a little bit above plane, that's what Mr. Hogan did himself. Then the club head comes down to the plane, the most powerful blow becomes the most accurate. I can take the horizontal swing with the club head in plane and simply by inclining from the hips you can see now that I can drive the golf ball down the plane line towards the target. So that's absolutely clear. There are choices but the most powerful blow and the most accurate blow are the ones that live in plane. Now don't fall for the old lie that if you swing the club gently the ball will go straighter. It's not true. It just won't go in the trees as far. I feel the most memorable and dramatic and clear demonstration of the swing plane was Hogan's drawing of the sheet of glass resting on his shoulders. It's on page 78 of the Modern Fundamentals of Golf. Now, Anthony Ravielli, who did the drawings and the artwork for Hogan, saw the pane of glass resting from the ball on the top of Mr. Hogan's shoulders. Now, the sternum, at the top of the sternum, is two or three inches lower, and I believe that is where the swing plane should run. So rather than the pane of glass, the swing plane that I'm interested in is the one that runs from the ball to the top of the sternum. I call that the optimum biomechanical swing plane. On the next page, number 79, Hogan has a small drawing of himself and a different demonstration of the swing plane. He's holding the book between his forearms and he clearly states that the back swing plane runs through the shoulders. So I believe that Mr. Hogan used the optimum biomechanical swing plane he just didn't have a name for it.